the best way to have access to a dollar is through stable coins. While the currency in your country is going to, I venture to say that's how they're gonna be taken down. These guys, well, kind of crooks. What's going on guys? Hope this finds you well. So are all wars bankers wars, as the old saying goes? Well, apparently the world's biggest bank is actually extremely, extremely jealous of a crypto company. A crypto company that dominates the stablecoin market. Anyway, so the banking giant JP Morgan says that this market dominance may jeopardize the space, which is really, really ironic because they're the world's largest bank. They're literally the world's largest bank. They're numero uno. So the company Tether that issues the USDT, which is basically the bridge between any digital cryptocurrency and any kind of fiat currency. Now what's crazy for the small companies that Tether is the most traded cryptocurrency in the world, only behind Bitcoin and Ethereum, which is pretty wild, very wild. So the banksters are getting jealous because of course they used to dominate anything and everything dealing with finance. What's funny is this company, Tether Holdings, which is based out of the British Virgin Islands, only employs 125 people, yet, yet they have over $96 billion in circulation all over the world, which is amazing. It's pretty astounding, actually. And crazy enough, for Q4 of 2023, they actually reported higher profits than even Goldman Sachs. 125 employees, that's pretty amazing. Now, another interesting angle that could be taken to basically kill off stable coins or their companies is the angle where the powers that be basically show that stable coins, not Bitcoin, but stable coins could actually be used for crimes. Crypto crimes, you know, supporting terrorists or, or sanctioned individuals or countries, et cetera, et cetera. But one interesting angle about that, for example, if you're in Argentina, inflation is sky high. Let's say you get paid for some goods or services, but, but you turn around and then you put that money, you convert that money into USDT, into a stable coin, basically into something tied to the US dollar, providing some form of stability while the currency in your country is going to because of course inflation. So there are some incredible uses for something like a stable coin. It's not all just bull baloney to buy any kind of random cryptocurrency because it's pegged to the dollar one to one. So there are actually some good sound uses. So putting your money into a stable coin creates a frictionless way to access far less volatile currency with massive fluidity being able to cross borders anywhere in the world. So there is something positive to say about that. But aside from those most excellent uses, a cryptocurrency data firm called Chain Analysis, they did, they took out their annual crime report, which surprisingly, most of the crimes committed using cryptocurrency do not involve Bitcoin. They actually involved stable coins. I venture to say that's how they're gonna be taken down. So stuff like this will help provide the regulators with reasons as to why they should kill stable coins. Even the United Nations Office of Drugs and Crime, they came out with a report detailing how casinos, illicit casinos and money launderers basically are all using stable coins. They're not using cryptocurrencies, even though technically a stable coin is a cryptocurrency. Nonetheless, they use it because it's a form of a digital dollar. And that makes perfect sense. With a report from Chain Analysis coming out saying that stable coins were used in up to 70% of all crimes, all scams and transactions involving any kind of cryptocurrency. So the majority of crimes committed using cryptocurrency were actually stable coins. Pretty fascinating. Where they say that last year alone, up to 83% of crypto payments to sanctioned countries like Iran or Russia were in stable coins. So stable coins mimicking the dollar, the euro, stuff like this. Fascinating. So they came out with a number of up to $40 billion from 2022 to 2023 using stable coins. Where interestingly enough, the single largest use category was for sanction evasion. So more than half of the $40 billion were all just to evade sanctions, with a majority using stable coins. Where an analyst says the obvious, they're saying, if you're in a sanctioned country, if you're in a sanctioned state, if you yourself are sanctioned, the best way to have access to a dollar is through stable coins. For example, the largest crypto exchange in Iran called Nobitax 
stablecoin usage versus Bitcoin is nine to one. Nine to one. That's huge. Goes to show a lot of people want access to the dollar somehow, and stable coins provide that. Super, super interesting. So as you can imagine, a similar trend is seen in other sanctioned countries. So of course, this provides a very easy way for them to basically go around international laws. And let's remember that Binance and the CEO of Binance, CZ, these were the laws that got him in trouble. And that's how they took him down. So if stable coins are providing the service to sanction people all over the world, well, they could find themselves in a lot of trouble and probably the banking industry would love that because it would take them out as financial competitors. Makes sense. So what's really funny is that stable coins, generally speaking, but in particular Tether, they claim that they have vast, large reserves to basically keep it pegged to the dollar on a one-to-one, -one, which funny enough, the banks themselves don't have that practice. It really kind of makes you wonder if the big banks basically are pushing, lobbying for more of the regulations, of course, because these are new competitors to them. And that makes a lot of sense. For example, JP Morgan analysts wrote that stablecoin issuers that have been more aligned with existing regulations are likely to benefit more from the coming regulations. What does that mean? Well, they're insinuating that companies like Tether are outside the scope of regulation. Now, there's no denying that some of these guys, some of these companies, well, they might fudge the numbers a little bit. Company Tether was actually fined $41 million back in 2021, fined by the CFTC for lying, <laughs> for lying about its reserves. But supposedly the company is trying to behave itself because they started releasing quarterly attestations, basically detailing their finances, trying to be in compliance. And that's how people found out that they actually made more profits than Goldman Sachs. So as you can see in their last report, Goldman Sachs reported profits $2.01 billion, which is nothing to sneeze at. But Tether actually made gains of approximately $2.85 billion. So considerably higher performance than one of Wall Street's biggest sharks, Goldman Sachs. Now what's super interesting about all this is actually how Tether made all their money. So in the super interesting report by Tether, which they say was conducted by an independent global auditing firm, the firm being called BDO, they claim that this report actually reaffirms Tether's own reserves holdings. And they provide a nice detailed breakdown of the company's reserves. All of this goes to demonstrate that the business of handling money is probably one of the most lucrative out there. So one of the most interesting things regarding Tether's report is that a lot of their profits actually came from holding US treasury bills, where those mature and they make a certain interest rate. They're essentially risk-free for almost anyone, where anyone around the world can actually buy them. So from US treasury bills alone, their profits actually were $1 billion just from that. But of course, with all these reserves sitting around, well, it's pretty easy to get a bunch of US treasury bills and rack up the benefits risk-free. Also super interesting is that the rest of the profits, roughly 1.85 billion, came from their holdings in gold and Bitcoin, which of course is no coincidence with the whole Bitcoin ETF, BlackRock ETF, all that stuff getting approved and the value essentially going up, basically doubling since last year. So of course, with the increase in demand for Bitcoin, well, a lot of people are going to use USDT, Tether. <laughs> but despite the impressive profits for Q4 last year, overall for the year, they scored $6.2 billion, which is still below Goldman Sachs, $8.52 billion. But nonetheless, this gives you sort of an insight as to the amazing financial power behind some of cryptocurrency's power players compared to the world's biggest bank criticizing them. And of course, one of the world's largest asset managers, one of the world's most famous Wall Street sharks. All is fair in love and war. And all wars are banksters wars. <laughs> all right, guys, well, thanks for hanging out with me. Please don't forget to smash the like, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next one. Anybody out there?